Hi everyone, I'm Amber. This is a lovely yarn podcast. This is a podcast about mostly knitting, sometimes crochet, and sometimes spinning. And uh, thank you so much for coming and watching today. It's been over a month, which is pretty standard for me, I have found. Let's see, today's, what is today? Today's June 29th. I can't believe June's almost over. Um, and it's funny because every time I film a podcast, I think, oh, I'm going to film again in two weeks. But then I realize, oh, I just, I don't feel like I have enough content, enough items to film again that soon. So we're just going with every month or so. I, if you've watched this before, you will notice that I am in a different location. I'm actually in the same room, but I'm sitting on the opposite side of the room. So I'm sitting in front of my yarn stash. And um, this is most of it. This is my nice yarn. I have some stuff in my room downstairs that is kind of like my craft room slash Brad's office. And, um, but it is like the acrylic stuff, cotton, like dishcloth cotton, um, things that I would, or there's some knits or some yarns down there that I use when I knit gifts, if I'm giving gifts that, so they don't require to be hand washed. But this is my nicer yarn and my, my hand spun, my sock yarn. Up here is all the uh, worsted weight and Aran weight. And then I have like on this shelf that you can't see, there's two more shelves below this. So the one right below the fingering weight shelf has the DK and sport weight. And then the very bottom shelf has all different weights. It's actually um, like sweater quantities or shawl quantities like those things that I have on that bottom shelf, there's enough to make. It's already organized into a projects. Um, so that's all on the bottom shelf. So I thought I would just sit in front of my stash today and share some of it with you. <laughs> Two and a half shelves of it. I think I've shown this before maybe on, well, on Instagram more likely, which I'm not on Instagram anymore. I have not been on Instagram since December of last year. I don't know. Every now and then I, I feel like getting back on there because I do miss posting on there. Um, I didn't post a lot of knitting things. I posted some knitting things, but I posted a lot about our home and just nature and just things that were beautiful to me. I would take pictures and post those. So, um, but I'm not on there right now and I'm not sure if I will go back on there, although I have thought about it. Um, so basically, I tell you that because the only place that you can find me right now is right here on my YouTube channel. So again, thank you for watching. And I'm just going to say, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Or if you are watching for the first time and you like what you see, I would love for you to subscribe. So I have been so busy this summer for multiple reasons. Um, we did a big family vacation with my family, so my sisters and their families and then my parents. And um, we did that. We went to Emerald Isle, North Carolina, which I'm actually, there was, I was so excited. There was a yarn shop 10 minutes from the house we stayed in. So Emerald Isle is actually pretty far south in North Carolina. Um, so it's below what everybody calls the Outer Banks. It's considered, I think, like the Southern Outer Banks. And actually, I vacationed there all growing up. And then when Brad and I first got married, we would go with my family. And then we kind of stopped that. Oh, it's been a while. We haven't vacationed with everyone in Emerald Isle for a long time because we started doing vacations on our own with just Brad me and the kids, and we were going to Chincoteague in Virginia for a while, and then we started going to Maine, to Barbara Harbor, Maine, which is actually our favorite place to vacation. So this will be the first year, well, that's not true, because we didn't go anywhere last year. So last year was the first year we didn't go to Maine in um, many consecutive years. And we'll probably end up going back there last next year, but we had a good time at the beach, and like I said, there was this 
yarn shop 10 minutes from our house. So when we were out the first day getting groceries, we drove by it. It's called the Salty Sheep. We drove by it. I ran in just to kind of scope it out, but my kids and Brad were in the car, so I didn't want to be there too long. Um, so I talked, I was probably in there for like a half an hour. And honestly, I just was so overwhelmed by all the beautiful yarn that I was like, I got to come back when I'm by myself and I just have time to peruse and not feel bad that my family's sitting out in the hot car. <laughs> so I left and I did not make it back until Friday of that week. So basically right before we were getting ready to head back to Pennsylvania, I stopped in and I filmed some footage because I have to say that it is it was probably my favorite yarn shop I've ever been into um, just her yarn choices I met the owner both days that I was there and she was just so sweet and then the yarn that she keeps stocked is just some of my favorites and some that I had never gotten to see in person so that was really cool and it was just the whole atmosphere like both days that I was there they have this big community table in the middle of the shop and there were ladies there knitting and just talking about what yarn should I pick for this project and just throwing ideas around and um multiple like I'm trying to think two or three of the ladies that were there on Sunday were the same or on Monday were the same ladies that were there the second time I went so it was just you could tell it was a really like loving fun community knitting community and like they invited me to come to their knit night that night but I, I didn't because I was on vacation you know there's a fly flying around in here and it's driving me crazy I think it just went past uh, a second ago it is fly season right summertime and um so yes I, but so what I did is I asked the owner if I could film some footage of her shop and I did and I'm going to put that at the end for anybody who's interested or for anyone that might be down in that area I feel like it's well worth traveling to visiting because it was just she had you'll see you'll see if you watch the video so today what I'm gonna do is I have actually I have a lot to share um, I have some finished objects I have a lot of new cast ons because I'm do I have a lot? I feel like I have a lot. It's a lot for me, maybe. Actually, it might only be three. I think the reason it feels a lot is because I already have things going on um, that I, you know, like things that I need to finish that I haven't yet. Um, and then I have some stash enha enhancement, which it's been a long time since I have enhanced my stash. So I may have gone a little overboard. And a lot of that was actually purchased at local yarn shops. So part of it at my local yarn shop and the other part at the one in the Salty Sheep in North Carolina. So, and then I have a giveaway to, to do because I've been planning this giveaway for over a year, literally. I was, it's my 5K giveaway. And last year I hit 5K and then I stopped podcasting for a year uh, and in that time I lost followers so I went down below 5k and then when I started again this year I gained them I gained followers back so now I'm up over 5k so I'm doing the giveaway finally and I'm really excited because I feel like I have some really nice um, handmade gifts here and some vintage things too that I'm going to put in this giveaway. So I'll do that at the end. I'll do that at the very end because I first, I want to start with my finished objects because that's the way I do it. So my first thing, I have two pairs of socks as finished objects. And the first pair is right here. Got them on my little sock blockers. I got these from Judy of the Autumn Acorn. They were very affordable. And, um, they might be a little, I mean, I think any wood that you get is going to be just a tiny bit rough along the edges, but it's nothing that's, you know, makes them incredibly hard to get off and on the sock blockers. 
I, I've said this before, I think, but I only use these sock blockers to showcase my socks on my podcast. I don't actually block my socks. I knit them. They go right in my drawer or I give them away um, I, because I just feel like, why, why block socks? Maybe if it was a pair of cabled socks and you were giving them as a gift and you really wanted to make sure the cable or lace, lace socks, like, I could see blocking that, especially if you're giving it as a gift and you want them to see how beautiful it looks before they put them on their feet. That would totally make sense to block block socks then. But I just personally don't block my socks because they go right on my feet and I feel like it's a waste of time. And normally I just want to put them in my drawer when I'm finished with them. So these are the simple skip socks. I've made these before. I think this pattern is wonderful for a tweedy yarn or a, um, a solid yarn. And I think the last time I made these, oh yes, I did. The last time I made the, these, I made them in the same yarn, but a different color. So this is, hold on, I got to flip back and see. It's Knit Picks. Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. And this is the Firecracker Heather colorway. I really, really like tweed yarn. And I really like tweed yarn on my feet. I don't know why I like tweed yarn so much. It's just, I think all those little bits are just so fun. And I like the look of it. So um, if you have not tried the simple skip pattern, it's actually very simple. And it um, gives such a nice looking pattern. Let me see. So from back here, it just looks like it's a ribbing, but it is a ribbing, but it also has this texture on it, if you see. And that's just done by slipping stitches. And that goes the whole way down the length of the foot. And then I do a slip stitch heel, which I pretty much do on most of my socks, either that or I have partridge. And this is a free pattern. So that's always nice. I don't remember. I think I cast on 60 stitches because I think the pattern is 56, 60, 64, and so on. So I did 60, 60 or 64, whatever. I think it was 60. This fly is driving me crazy. There are a few things like insects that I cannot stand. Flies are one of them and Japanese beetles are the other because Japanese beetles are just coming out now where we live and they devour, they absolutely devour my garden every year. And it's a constant battle with them. So flies and Japanese beetles are like so annoying to me. <laughs> so if this fly doesn't stop flying around, I'm going to have to pause this and try to kill it before I finish filming. Okay. So anyway, these are made for me. I am, I don't know. I, I pretty much don't, I've been knitting socks for a while now. So socks are one of those stress-free kind of knitting things and I always have a sock going. I think a lot of knitters are like this because they're portable and a lot of the socks that I do are mindless. I don't have to think a whole lot. I don't, I've done cabled socks and I've done lace socks, but I don't prefer them. I honestly, I prefer, I don't really like lace socks on my feet. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop this right now and get this fly out of my room. I'll be back. Okay. I'm back. I'm sorry. I just can't, I couldn't stand that. I couldn't sound, I could not stand the buzzing and I couldn't stand seeing it fly in front of me. It was driving me nuts. I hope it wasn't too annoying for you guys. If there are other people out there who detest flies as much as me, I know they have a purpose. I know, I know because you know, I used to have livestock animals. I know they help decompose things, but when they're in my house, they just Ah, it's like one of those things. Like, you know how some people can't stand the sound of fingernails on chalkboards? That's how I feel with flies in my house. So anyway, let's get back to the knitting. So here are my simple skip socks and yeah. Oh, and I, I should say that I will link everything down below or I will at least list the name of it if I don't provide a direct link. It just depends on how much time I have when I actually go to edit this podcast. So. I don't really have anything else to say about these socks other than I've made this pattern multiple times. I really like it. I think if you want a nice uh, 
beautiful sock pattern that has texture and interest to it, yet you don't want anything complicated, then go ahead and try this one out. And it's free, so how, I mean, there's really no losing when it's free, right? And it's one that's, I memorize, like it's memor, I memorized it. If I don't knit it for a while, I'll have to just look over it. It's basically a two line repeat. So yeah, super, super simple. So the name fits it well. So I'm gonna take these off and put my next finished object on because they are also another pair of socks. I, I feel like I tend to knit, typically I tend to knit more socks in this, I knit socks all year round. But in the summer, I've heard other people say this, sock knitting's nice because the projects aren't big. So, you know, it's warmer in the summer. And it's nice to have a small project. Um, but I do, I do like socks. I do like to knit socks. I wish I was more of a garment knitter because I love to have the finished garment, but the process of it is not my favorite. And I think it's because it just takes longer. <laughs> so I must be my patience level, I don't know. Okay, so here are my next pair of socks. This is a pattern I've never knit before, but again, it's a very simple pattern. Okay, so this, this pattern is called Rye Light by Tin Can Knits. And basically it has this panel of garter ridge along the top of the sock the whole way up. And then the rest of it is just like a plain vanilla sock. So you see that there. So it's just a pale, plain guard. It's so it's also another very easy pattern, but yet it gives some interest because I do like a little bit of texture. Unless it's a striping sock, then I just like to go and do the stripes and just round and round and round. Um, so I don't remember if I changed this pattern in any way. I don't believe so. I probably did 15 or to 20. That's what I typically do. Oh boy, and what did I cast on? I don't know. Not that it's really important to know that because it's a free pattern. And if I remember correctly, it's all sizes from like children up to a large size for adults. And it has a slip stitch heel, but I don't know if I put that in there or if the pattern called for that. I'm not really sure. But let's just take a moment to admire this yarn. I've showed it before on my podcast a couple of times. This was this yarn was hand dyed by my friend Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces. I've talked about her a lot. I've talked about her yarn a lot. She lives nearby. She has Icelandic and Shetland sheep. Now this, this yarn is not from her sheep, but she also, so she makes farm yarn and she also hand dyes yarn. And actually the next project I'm going to show you is made with her farm yarn. So that's exciting. Um, but this colorway is the Lavender Honey Latte. I do not know if she has this in her shop currently, but I will link her shop so you can check that out. She has lots of other pretty colors. I'm actually going to be showing quite a bit of Jody's yarn today, now that I think about it. It's one of my new cast-ons. I'm using some of it as well. So, the Rye Light Socks by Tin Can Knits. Free pattern, lots of different sizes to choose. Oh, and I should say, anytime I knit socks, I knit them on nine inch circulars, and I usually use a size zero or one US. I just like the gauge that I get with that small needle. Okay, so that, that is my last sock. Well, that's my last finished sock. Now, uh, I told you I was going to be showing you more of Jody's yarn. And it's right back here behind me. So I mentioned in my last podcast that I was doing some sample knitting for Jody. She just came out with, she got some yarn back from the mill, from her sheep, and um, she 
this was the first time that she's going to be carrying this particular base. And when I say base, I shouldn't say base. I don't know how to, because I don't know that it would ever be replicated again, but it's, it's okay. This is the first time she's carrying sport weight farm yarn. And when I say farm yarn, I mean, it's coming from almost all of it's coming from her Icelandic and Shetland sheep rather than, um, you know, being sourced from other places. So it's coming from her farm, which is like just a stone surf from where I live. So it's really cool. Um, so anyway, she asked me if I would test knit the shift cow by Andrea Mowry using her farm yarn, which is a sport weight. She, um, gave me the yarn. Well, she had several different options for colors. So I went to her place and we kind of picked out colors together and a little interesting tidbit. And a lot of you probably know this, but some of you may not, but when you're trying to, when you're doing color work or you're working with a pattern that has different colors, like you're using different yarns, different colors of yarn in it. Uh, one of the ways that you can figure out if you're going to have a high enough contrast between your colors is to take a picture of those yarns side by side, just kind of line them up and then go into your editing and make it a black and white photo. And then that can, that'll really show if you're going to have enough contrast, which I don't, I don't know that I really ever did that until Jody and I were down there and she's like, I'm like, do you think that's enough contrast? And she said, well, let's take a picture and try it. And it's actually a really good way to do it. So this is the shift cowl by Andrea Mowry knit in Jody's farm yarn. And I'll talk a little bit about the yarn after I show it. Okay. So here we go. And instead of me putting it on right now, I'm going, I took a picture of it to send to her when I finished it last week. So I'm going to insert that picture right here. Okay. So when I started this cow, I was working with three different solid colors. And so I wanted to make sure that I placed the colors in a way that was pleasing <laughs> because in the original pattern, which somewhere I had somewhere um, well anyway it's made with spin cycle yarn which it's spin cycle yarn the one that Andrea Maori did in the in the sample for her the pattern it's like different it's almost looks like hand spun so wait let me show you what I mean right. so it's like this this is some of my hand spun. So like the spin cycle, it's all, it's like the different colors throughout and it's barber pulled. Okay. Um, so that is what the yarn is like in the original. And so when I got, when I got the yarn off of Jody and I was trying to figure out placement, I got onto Ravelry because I wanted to see what other people were doing as far as placement when they were using solids or semi-solids. And honestly, most people, did not did not use semi solids. A lot of them used the yarn that was more like this. I know there's another. Okay, so there's spin cycle, and then the um, girls from Cocktail Hour at the Coop. They like to use. I think it's is it Feederbrook, Fenderbrook, Feederbrook. Oh gosh, it's something Brook because they make yarn that looks like the hand spun like that. That's barber pulled and with all different colors. And I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's more affordable than the spin cycle. So, um, I, I literally went down through every single project on Ravelry, <laughs> all the pages of them, trying to find, just try, doing my research before I started this, because I did not want to cast on and be like, oh my gosh, this is, this was not good. So basically I just, I took some notes and I'm going to, just share those real quick. But so first let me show you the yarns. All right. This is all I have left of that dark color, but this, Oh, Oh goodness. This one, this light, this is all from one sheep of Jody's. It's a Shetland sheep and it, its name is Roberta. So that was my light color. And then I used a medium color, which is like a grayish, 
brown. And this was a mix of Icelandic and Shetland from her farm. Okay, so. So we got these two. And then the darkest color, I hardly have any left of it, but that, I love this color. So this actually has Shetland mixed in with some merino. So Jody does not have merino. So the mill actually used merino from another source for this. And then some of that merino is dyed with an eggplant color dye as well as a nutmeg. So these were my three colors and it's funny. So you, you use the most of color A. So that might be something to consider when you're doing that because these were all roughly 200 yards and this is all the more I have left of A. And even if you look at this, you can see, it looks like I used a lot of the lightest color too, but apparently um, I used the most of A. Now again, it could have been, this is milled farm yarns, so the yardage is probably off a little bit. They're probably not all spot on 200 yards. So you pick three different colors or three different yarns when you're doing this, when you're making this cowl. And so color A for me was the darkest color and then color B was the lightest color. And then my third color C was the medium gray color or that middle color, the middle shade. And um, I think that that's really helpful to know and then be able to look at somebody's finished project because you can kind of see how it looks. The only thing I did, so because I was doing a sample knit for Jody to take, she's taking this, this sample as well as a couple other things that she knitted with her farm yarn to Yarns by Design in Oakmont, which is my local, it's not really local, but it's my closest yarn shop. She's in July at some point, they are having a, she's having like a trunk show. And so she wanted some different projects knitted up in her farm yarn so people could see what they could do with it. And so I did want to stay kind of close to the pattern um, because I wanted, first of all, I wanted to be sure that there would be enough yardage of each color. If somebody was going to buy three skeins, three different colored skeins, that they were going to have enough to knit this pattern. And then um, also I just wanted to see, you know, not everybody is overly adventurous. Some like some people really like to just go off the pattern and just kind of use the pattern as a rough direction. And then they like to do their own thing. And other people like to stick to the pattern. They don't really feel comfortable modifying it a whole lot. So I didn't modify, I didn't, I just kind of went with what it told me. So if it said to use yarn A, I used yarn A. If it said B, B. If it said to use C, I used C. Except one little section here in the middle, I threw some, I threw three lines of this dark in because I just wanted to pull this in a little bit in the middle and I knew it was going to be pulled in again at the end but every other color was scattered throughout except that dark brown that was the only one that wasn't going to be in this section at all and I kind of didn't like that if I were to knit this again on my own and even with this yarn I would totally just play around with all of this and just mix all these colors in even more and not have such color blocks Okay. Now this is the color blocking is definitely not as noticeable when, when you're wearing it, it, because it all scrunches. I mean, this is pretty, this is a cow. So look, it's, it's like pretty, it's pretty long. So when you're wearing it, it scrunches. Now I will say I was, while I was knitting it, I was worried. I was like, oh my goodness, I hope this isn't too wide on the neck and it's just going to like fall and flop over, but it's actually the perfect width with Jody Jarn. Like it sets perfectly on my neck. And again, that's why I wanted to put that picture in because I want you to see how it sets on my neck. Um, so it, this is an asymmetrical cowl, which I'm not really sure why she designed it that way. To be completely honest, I am not a big fan of asymmetrical things. I like symmetry in my life. And when I've done asymmetrical shawls in the past, I've, those are the ones I wear the least because I feel like they don't stay on. And I don't really, I don't know, I just, I like symmetrical patterns. But this is asymmetrical, so 
slightly. So it doesn't really look like it here, but when I flip it over, you're going to see the seam and you really can't, you really can't tell on here, <laughs> but it is, trust me, this, this seam is offset a bit. So it doesn't exactly, this seam doesn't exactly line up with this point. It's offset a little bit. And it's not, it's not like overly, um, obvious, but I just kind of wondered one, I just thought, wonder why she designed it like that. Wonder, I wonder why she offset it like that. Um, I'm not really sure why she designed it like that. Do you guys know? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's fine. She did because it's her pattern. I'm just saying, I was kind of like, huh, I wonder why it's like that. And then what you do is it's knit back and forth. Okay. Actually it's like knit diagonally. And then when you're done, you just do the mat, use a mattress stitch to steam, to seam this up here. So yeah, this is my shift cowl by Andrea Mallory in Jody's of flower heel fleeces um, in her yarn, her farm yarn. And she probably doesn't have this on her website yet because she's going, I think she's going to do like the big feature at Yarns by Design in July. Okay. So that's it for finished objects. All right. I feel like I have some fun cast ons here, some whips. I got some fun whips going on. Um, like I said earlier, I always like to have a sock going because it's, I'll take my knitting to church and I, I sometimes knit in church. I'm always a bit hesitant to do that because I'm, I, I think, what if people think I'm just like being disrespectful and not paying attention, but I am, I'm totally paying attention. So, um, sometimes I'll pull it. It depends. It often depends where I'm sitting. Like if there's a lot of people around me, I'm less likely to do it. But if I can be a little bit more discreet about it, I will pull my knitting, but it's always a sock because it's always tiny and I can set it on my lap. And so, um, yeah, I always like to have a sock on the go. Plus it's an easy, like really, you just put it in a little bag and you're ready to go. Okay. So this is some yarn that I bought at the Salty Sheep in North Carolina. This is called a Zauberball. And specifically Zauberball Crazy. And this is by Shopple. And I am going to put the information for this yarn down below because it's in German and I do not know how to pronounce like these different things. And they I, they have a colorway number and a lot number, but I don't know which is which because I don't speak German. And they also have an actual name for this yarn, but I don't know how to pronounce it. And I would totally mess it up if I even tried. So like I said, I'll just put that all down below. But this is a 75%, 25% wool nylon, nylon, and it's a barber pulled yarn. And it just rolled away from me. <laughs> so let me show you the ball. Isn't that fun? Um, so the Salty Sheep actually had probably five or six different colorways in this yarn. And I really like this one because of the blues and pinks, but it was funny because when I started, look how green and yellow it is. I was not, I mean, I saw that green and yellow yarn on the outside of the ball, but it just, I don't know. It's going to turn out to be a very green and yellow sock up here. And I don't know what the repeats are. I'm going to try to make the second sock match the first one, but I don't know how that's going to work because I don't know how long the repeats are of this particular yarn. So what I'm doing here is this, I don't know what this is. It was in my little, um, my little basket of like bits of yarn, sock yarn. I do know it's a sock yarn and it's a wool and nylon blend sock yarn. And then this pretty yellow color is actually from River of a uh, knitter's homestead and she dyed this it's called marigold so i don't know if she dyed it with marigolds or it's just the colorway name is marigold 
And then the toe, I'm going to pick another, a different color. I don't know what that is going to be yet because I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm just going to wait and see what colors are down here, like what colors I have near the toe. And then I'll probably pick the toe yarn for after I see that. Um, so yeah, I'm just starting to get into like the pinks and teals. And then this is going to be like some pastel stuff. So that's fun right? It's fun. I cast on using the chow goo. These are size z zeros. Wait, hold on. These might, I cannot read. Does anybody else have a hard time reading their knitting needles? Like the size is printed on the actual metal needle. And I have realized that I need reading glasses now, which is horrible. Um, I can't, I honestly can't even see it. I can kind of see that there's something written there, but I don't have any clue what it says, but I think these are, they're either zeros or ones. Cast on 60 stitches. I did 12 rows of one by one ribbing. And I don't know. I just went until I felt like starting the heel. I just, I just go with it when I knit socks. <laughs> and then the slip stitch heel, which I think I do 16. So when I do my heel, I can, I can count 16 little slip stitches the whole way up. And then I know my sock has a long enough heel for my foot. So yes, that is what's going on here with these. And they are going to be some bright, some crazy socks. I don't really know that I have much that will match them, but they're on my feet, so it doesn't really matter, right? And I think I'm going to have enough to do actually two pairs of socks. This is, let me see if I can find the little tag. Yeah, here it is. This is, I know, I, okay, I know this is going to be backwards. Somebody pointed that out to me. And the reason that is, is because I'm using my selfie camera lens because I like to be able to see what I'm filming. I know some podcasters who use their phones actually use the front lens because it's often better quality, but I can't stand that. I can't stand not knowing if I'm in the frame or if things are focused. So it's, it's going to be flipped backwards, but it, so let me see here. I want to see the yardage on it. 420 meters and 100 grams. So, I don't know. That's, that's about what other sock yarns are. But I just feel like I'm going to have... This, this ball is still really full. I feel like I'm going to be able to make two pairs of socks like regular size socks. We'll see. We'll see what I end up being able to do with it. Okay. Yeah, that's all I want to say about that. I need to get my notebook so I don't... <gasps> I'm dropping everything. Okay. I'm going in the order of cast on. So the next thing I cast it on, actually that's a complete lie because I didn't buy that yarn until I was on vacation and I cast it on the next thing before we left so I would have something to knit in the car. So that was a lie. Oh. I am super excited about this, this particular cast on and I'm actually fairly close to being finished with it. It's gonna, I feel like it's gonna be hard to show you though because of the way it's constructed, but I'm going to do my best here. It is The Rift by Jacqueline C. Slick. And I have actually been wanting to knit this sweater for um, a while. I've had it saved in my favorites on Ravelry. And then I bought, I bought this yarn last year. Let me grab the yarn. It's attached? No. Okay. So this is Quince & Co. Willet. And this is in the Hauser colorway. So it's like a gold. It's definitely gold toned. I bought this to make a particular Quince & Co. company. Quince & Co. company. Quince & Co. pattern. Azor maybe was the name of the pattern. I think that was the name. Azor. 
And then I decided the way that, that that pattern was, it had a lot of dropped stitches so you could actually see through it in places. And I'm, I just, no, I didn't want that because I don't, I don't really like to layer a lot in the summer. I don't mind layering in the winter, but in the summer, I don't, I didn't want to have to wear a cami under a knit, a knit sweater, even though it was knit in cotton. I just, I don't know. I felt like, no, I don't really want that. So I bought the yarn. I had the pattern saved for that Azure t-shirt. And then I was, the summer came and went and I never knitted it. And so when, when it was spring this year, I thought I want to use that yarn because it's, it's really nice yarn and it wasn't, Quince & Co is I'd say they're moderately priced, but it wasn't like it was cheap yarn that if I didn't use, it was no big deal. So I wanted to make sure I used it. So I pulled it off the shelf and I found a pattern on Etsy from a designer that I actually purchased it. And then I started to swatch for it and I thought, no, I do not like, I don't like, this is not going, this yarn and this project are not going together. It's not working. I think that was called the Daybreak Tea. And I, the, I think the reason was because the band along the bottom of that t-shirt was ribbed and it was like a tight, it was more of a gathered rib. And I know I could have changed that hem, but then there were just other things that I was, I just wasn't feeling it as far as, no, I like the pattern. I like the look of it and I will eventually knit that pattern, but I wasn't thrilled with that pattern and this yarn. So then I thought, okay, I got on Ravelry, I did some research, and I went into my favorites, and I saw the Rift. And I was like, yeah, I wanted to knit that for a long time, so why don't I go ahead and do it? So I swatched using, the pattern calls for size 8 needles, and the uh, yarn that it calls for, hold on, I have the pattern right here. Yeah, it calls for size eight needles. And then she did her samples in Little Fox yarn. Linea, which is merino, cotton, linen, and silk. So it's a blend, it's a very nice blend. But that yarn, when you block it, it grows and plumps up. Cotton does not grow and plump up at least not any cotton I've ever knit with before. So I was like, wow, this is, this Willet is I think a sport weight. Let me see what the tag says. I'm pretty sure this is sport weight. It feels like a sport weight. It's 160 yards per 50 grams and it's a, they recommend to use a US five. So I'm gonna say this is like a sport weight on yarn. And so I went down to a size seven or maybe even a six needle. And I thought, I'm just going to start my swatch with that. And my, so when I did my gauge swatch, it was still going to be, I was getting too many, too many stitches in that little four inch section than I should have like by a lot. So I was like, okay. This is way, this, if I go down to a five, I can mess around with that, but then I feel like I'm still gonna have way too many stitches. So what I ended up doing was I found this awesome formula. I think it was Tin Can Knits. I will link it down below because I found it extremely helpful. And it, it's a formula, a simple formula. You just have to do some very simple math. And I say simple because I, although I took advanced math, classes in high school and college it was only because I had to <laughs> I I don't enjoy math but this was doable it, this did not stress me out um, but basically there's a way to adjust your gauge and you use the gauge that so you know because different yarns just speak to you different ways I sound weird but I, I think you know what I'm talking about um, but it's really, it's a simple formula. And so I was able to take that formula. I was able to take the gauge that I achieved using my size five needles, which is what's recommended for this yarn. I used, I plugged those numbers in to a formula. 
and then it gave me how many stitches total I would need to cast on. Okay, this is probably not making any sense because I, again, I this is why my daughter and I, who yeah, I homeschool my kids, I think this is why my daughter and I butt head so much in, in algebra because I don't, I'm not very good at explaining math concepts. <laughs> But anyway, it gives you the total number. So this formula that you plug your numbers into, it gives you the total number that you need to cast on to get the size that you need for your bust. Okay, so let's just simplify it and say that. Then what you do is you go into the pattern and you look at the stitches, the stitch count that's closest to the one that you need, and then that's the size you cast on. And it adjusts everything for your yarn weight. I don't know if that made any sense, but let me show you. For example, I normally will knit like a 40, finished 40 inch bust. So I have a little bit of ease because that's typically, so I'll do like the 40 inch. But for this, with this yarn using the formula, I actually cast it on the number of stitches for the 56 inch bust. So it's, I'm just going to, I'm just going to link that little article down below. It's not hard. I'm not explaining it well. The article explains it so clearly. Just, it's, I was like, I feel like there are so many possibilities now that I know how to do that. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. You guys might all know how to do that, but I just learned how to do that. So back to the sweater, back to the rift. This pattern is wonderful. It is adjustable. So you can do a V-neck, you can do a boat neck, you can do, you can flip those around and have the V-neck in the back or in the front, the boat neck at both, or the, you know, you can just do whatever with that. Then you can also add bust darts. I don't need to add bust darts because I don't have a big bust, but for women who do, you can do that. Then you can also customize your, um, your sleeve width for your biceps, which she tells you, she tells you when to do that. Like if, if there's, if I think it's, if your bicep is over a certain, um, circumference, then you should use the little formula she gives to customize the bicep. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I haven't read, I read through the whole pattern at the beginning, but I haven't since then. And then you can do short sleeves or you can do long sleeves, which for this, because it's a summer top, I'm doing short sleeves. So what I chose to do was the V-neck in the front because I really like V-necks. I like how they, so I have a very short torso, very short torso. I have long legs, short torso. So my, sh my upper half is often like, I feel like it looks smushed. So V-necks kind of help elongate that. So I like V-necks. So I was super excited to be able to make a V-neck. So I went for the V-neck on the front and I'm doing the boat neck on the back. There's the front. <laughs> this is going to be hard to show because I have it on two different needles and yeah, anyway. So I've already finished the front and I have that just hanging out on a needle. And I have my little stoppers on the end, on this cable, I mean, I'm hanging out on a cable with stoppers so that, you know, I don't lose all those live stitches. And right now I'm currently working on knitting the boat neck and I have one of the shoulders done. And so I have the left, left shoulder done and I need to finish the right shoulder. And then I think, I think if I remember correctly, I'm going to attach the two, the front to the back. And then I'll go and pick up stitches and knit a short sleeve. Let me see if I can show you the sleeve for those of you that have not seen this pattern. Okay, here we go. I'll show you this. So that's, that is actually the version I'm making. It's the V-neck with the short sleeve. And then here is, um, that's a v-neck as well with long sleeves. So, and then another thing is it's a bottom up sweater and you start with the bottom. Imagine that it's a bottom up sweater. You start with the bottom, but you do a split hem, which I love. I love split hens. Hens. I love split hens. 
good grief I can't talk I love split hems again that is because I have a short torso and I like how it kind of just spreads out on the side and doesn't draw I feel like it doesn't the tight it doesn't I don't know I just find them more flattering on myself so um, you don't have to do this but I made my back hem longer than my front hem that way I will know well and I also have the v-neck but she said that if you wanted to make this totally reversible then you just keep your both of your hems the same length so I if I wanted this totally reversible I could have the same length on the hem and then I could wear it either v-neck in the front or boat neck in the front but I I'm I just want to have the v-neck in the front so yeah I'm good to go with that and then this little hem is a twisted rib. I have never done twisted rib before. Can you believe that? And it was a little fiddly at first because of how you have to put your needle in before you do your um, knit and purl because you're basically knitting and purling in the back of the stitch. Um, but I love the way it looks. And I also noticed that, I don't know if it's just because this is cotton yarn or if this would also do this with the wool yarn, but it's not at the ribbing doesn't scrunch as much so it doesn't pull in as much so I think that would be a nice option for when I want a hem that doesn't that's not going to be like gathered in tight so I'm going to keep that in mind and again that could just be because this is cotton and it doesn't have as much memory as wool it doesn't have as much spring I don't know and then another really pretty thing I like about this pattern because it's it's not a hard pattern to knit it isn't you just followed the directions and it's you're you're fine but this pretty panel that runs up the side just gives it some visual interest can you see that so this is my rift and I like it so much I have yarn I bought yarn in North Carolina to start another one when I finish this one which I will show you that yarn in a little bit when I show you my my stash enhancement okay so there we go and I am hoping that the length is good I did not follow her length suggestions because her the one that she has is super cropped I'm not a fan of super cropped shirts I like them to hit right at my hips it's not that I would not wear a cropped shirt but again my short torso mm, just don't really want to draw a lot of attention to that area so I don't really want to wear super cropped things. So this one's going to be kind of like a um, experiment with the length. And then when I knit my next one, I'll know better as far as how long to make it. What I actually did, and I don't know, again, maybe you know this trick, but I'm going to tell it in case you don't. If you have a shirt, so I prefer top down sweaters to knit because I feel like they're just easier to try on and to adjust length. But if you have a pattern that is bottom up and you don't want to go through the hassle of like trying to figure out how to convert it into top down, what I do is I will take a, like in this case, I took a t-shirt that I had, like a, a, it's, it's more of a fitted t-shirt or I've taken sweaters if I'm knitting a bottom up sweater and I'll lay it out on my bed and I'll lay whatever I'm knitting on top and I'll line the bottoms up and then I can kind of use that to see how much further I need to knit until I get to the arm where I'm going to be um, like the armhole. So if I would have my t-shirt, what I did is I laid the t-shirt out on the bed, laid this on top, lined the bottom hem up and I could see, oh, okay, I need to knit up to here so that it matches where the armhole is on that t-shirt. So that is a trick to do to help you kind of figure out your length when you're knitting bottom up shirts and sweaters. So yes, that is what's going on with that one. I actually had purchased, I think I purchased five skeins of this Willet. Oh my goodness, I'm dropping everything. I'm dropping everything. I'm not talking correctly. It's probably because I'm busy. You know how when you get busy, you just don't think straight. So I have, I still have two full balls, a little bit left of the one that's attached. 
and I don't have much to do. All I have to do is finish a shoulder, which does not use much yarn, and then cast on the two sleeves, which are not very long. So I'm going to definitely have, I'm definitely going to have a, one whole skein left. So yeah, there we go. The rift. I love it. I love it. I, I've noticed I like simple. I wear simple stuff. I do love color work and I do wear color work, but as far as like lacy cable -y sweaters, especially lacy sweaters, I don't know. I just haven't found, I'm, I'm not drawn to them. Making lots of extra noise today, guys. It all started with that, with that fly. All right. All right. Now my last cast on. I just casted this on on Friday. So we went camping over the weekend with my parents and I had the socks and I had the sweater but I was kind of bored with the socks and the sweater I thought this is probably I'm at a point in the sweater where I'm going to be joining and and finishing doing some finishing stuff and I don't think it's going to be the best project to have when I'm camping because I want to be able to engage with the people around me. So I thought I need something different and I, and I have, I wanted something that wasn't difficult, but yet still had some variety in it. And I had happened to be watching Tara. Hmm. Tara B. Kennan is her name. Is I think that's the name of her channel on, on here as well. And she was talking about Stephen West, Murdices Unite, and she had just knitted one. And I thought, oh, I have thought about that shawl in the past because you use a lot of different colors. It's fingering weight. Um, it's done in sections. It's not, It's it didn't appear to be a challenging knit. Like it definitely seemed like it was one that I could knit while talking to people and sitting around the campfire. So I got home from work on Friday and we were going to be leaving pretty directly. And I was like, no, I have to get my, I have to finish this or figure this knitting thing out. You know how it is when you're traveling and you're a knitter, you have to plan your knits. Well, I didn't have anything planned because it had been just a busy week and I had waited till the last minute. So I thought I'm going to buy that pattern and I'm going to knit that. And all I really have to decide upon is the first panel like section A is the biggest. And so in that pattern, I think there's, oh, I have it on my phone, so I can't look at it because I'm filming on my phone, but I think there's five different sections and you knit a section and then you join along the edge and then you pick up, so you pick up stitches along the edge to join in a new color. So in the section one, he has you striping two different yarns. And I have had this yarn that has been setting on my, shelf and I love it. And I was like, okay, I really don't want to put that into socks because I love it that much. Like I just want to have it up where I can see it, where it's not getting worn on my feet. And, um, I thought, oh, that would be perfect for that first section. And the first section takes a lot of yarn. And since I was, I didn't, but I didn't want to stripe it. I just wanted to showcase this yarn. So this yarn is by Little Lionhead Knits, Colleen. I've used so much of her yarn. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I love her colors. And this is Magnolia Wind is the name of this. And it's a fingering weight. It's 85 merino, 15 nylon. So let me show you. I actually got quite a bit done. So here's the ball of yarn. And here is what I have done of section one so far, which is quite a bit. So I did all of this from Friday evening through Monday at some point. Now I didn't knit the whole time we were camping. You know, we rode bikes and we did some other things, but we mostly sat around a lot. So, um, Yes, this is section one of the Vertices Unite. 
and I'm probably going to use up a good portion because I'm still increasing. And once I, I'm almost done increasing, and then once I'm done increasing, I start decreasing. And I decrease down to 45 stitches. So I decrease down to half of the amount of stitches I'm going to have on here. So it's going to make like a, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, what I'm saying is I'm, I feel like I'm going to use up a lot of this, which is wonderful. I like when I can use up my yarn. I have so many like bits of fingering weight yarn left, like scraps of it. And it's fun to have that, but I don't, I like when I can use up yarn. So this is going, this is my, this is what I'm basing the whole shawl inspiration off of. So all of my other colors are going to kind of be based off of this. And this has, I'm not, it's not picking up the beautiful colors. I'm so bummed about that. But it's like this, this blue color, mauves, um, peachy, like, like a peachy color. There's little specks of yellow, a darker, a darker reddish. It's not red, but it's not pink and it's not what would you call that? It's more of like a burnt red. Um, and then pinks, peaches, yeah. I just, this is really gonna match my wardrobe. And it actually, these colors are reminding me of my color craze shawl that I knit. Was it last summer? No, I think it was two summers ago now. Yeah, it was two summers ago. I feel like the colors are very similar in this one to the color craze, and I love that color craze shawl. Um, I wear it a lot because it goes with a lot of my clothing. So I have not really given a lot of thought as to what I'm going to do for all the other sections, but I am going to do some striping because I do find that that will be interesting. And I will show you that I have this little bunch of, um, this is from Flower Hill Fleeces. So again, Jody. And this is her Zinnia minis, her mini skeins in the Zinnia. And I wonder, this was from last year. I don't know if she still has this or not. This is what happens when you buy yarn and you don't use it right away. You don't know if the dyer still carries that particular colorway. Because I got on Colleen's website actually this morning and I don't believe she has this Magnolia Wind right now in stock. But I thought some of these will go really good with it and maybe stripe it with I don't know I got this I don't even know what this is somebody sent this to me and I don't even know what it is um, oh oh it just there it is this fell out it's oh wool watermill where was that even at <laughs> okay okay I'm just dropping everything but then I also have some colors in here that I thought would work like this one. Oh my gosh, that would work. This one. Could I stripe these two together? I don't know. I just want to have fun with this. I love color. I don't wear a lot of color, but I love when I can knit with color because it keeps things interesting. So I'm excited to make this. Because it's a shawl, I'm cool with the color. I would probably not wear a super colorful sweater. Even the color work sweaters I do, they're more of a, they're more muted. Like, I don't know. I, I would like to wear the bright colors. I'm just not sure if I would, if I'd wear that stuff very often. But for a shawl, I'm like, it's an accessory. So we can just go crazy and have fun. So yeah, basically I have all these minis. I've got this and I have like a couple other things that I could use. I don't know. I got a bat. I got so many little scraps that I'm just gonna have fun with it. Like I could even stripe this, which is a. Can you see that? It's got like speckles. I could stripe that with that. It's gonna be so much fun, so much fun. And it's good because it it's not a, it's not something that requires a lot of attention. It's not a project that you have to sit there and really think about. I'm really excited about this one. Can you tell? So I will be, I have another long car trip this weekend. Um, so that'll give me time to work on this. And I'm hoping that by the time I leave for that, I can at least get 
this section done. I don't know, that might be, that might be a lot of work, but I'm gonna try because then I can start on the next section and have that to work on in the car. So yes, that is the Vertices Unite by Stephen West. So can you tell I'm excited about it? I'm just so excited about this project. Okay, I just wanna show you a few things. So I've got two more things to talk about on this podcast episode. This may be a long episode. I hope that's okay. You can watch it in segments. I actually really like, I, I like longer podcasts because then I can watch them in segments. And actually, no, I have three more things I wanna talk about because I actually wanna talk about a few podcasts that I really, really enjoy and I wanna share with you guys. But let's talk about some some things I've bought because it's been a long time since I've bought anything because I do, I really do like to use from my stash. I do because I bought it. I love the yarn. It's beautiful. There are some things now that I've thought, why did I buy that? Or, oh, I don't really like that like I used to, or, oh, I don't really like, like I have some uh, loft. <laughs> And I say it like that because it, it was pricey, but it was on sale. It was last year, they had a sale in the spring. That was probably the last time I bought yarn uh, last spring. So it's been over a year. Anyway, they had a sale. So I think it was 20% off, which was the reason I bought it. But the sweater I bought to make that yarn with, I'm no longer interested in making. And um, yeah. It's okay because I can find another sweater, but it's also, you can kind of see it right, right up there. It's that red. Yeah, I don't, also I'm like, will I, will I really wear a red sweater? I don't know, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna hang on to it for a little while. I can always try to sell it on Ravelry or eBay if I decide I don't wanna use it. Um, but let's talk about some acquisitions. So the first thing I want to show you guys is my new needle set because I saved up for this and I absolutely love this because I love Chao Gu needles. They're my favorite needles. I have an interchangeable, I have two interchangeables from Knit Picks that I used for years and I really like the interchangeables because then you don't have to have a bunch of just individually standing needles. Um, but I, I got this Chao Gu because it has from size two the whole way up to size 15 and then you get let's see you get four cables for the smaller size and four cables for the larger size needles and it comes in this little package and it has it has the little like t-pins that you have to use to tighten them and it has um, these things are to put stoppers on the end of your cables so they don't slide off when you're like holding stitches. I really like these. My only complaint is they, at the connection, they work loose a lot easier than my Knit Picks ones do. So sometimes you'll get when you buy these and I'm not sure why I didn't receive this I feel like it should be a standard thing when you order these interchangeables but I've seen that some people get like this little rubber kind of or silicone little heart that's like a grip it helps you grip the t-pin better when you so when you twist it you're making sure you're getting a tighter twist and that would actually be very helpful so I just need to get a pe little piece of like silicone mat even the stuff that you can buy to line your cabinets and stuff or in your drawers would, would work because it's that grippy silicone. Other than that, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with these. I really like them. I'm, I don't regret purchasing them. Like I said, they were, they were an investment, but I had saved up for these. Um, and so I don't, I don't regret it. Okay. I purchased those over the winter, I think, <laughs> but I still wanted to share. Right before we left for the beach, I went to Yarns by Design and I've been wanting to knit a Felix pullover and I went there and they had one and I was like, oh my goodness, I love that. What yarn, I love the way it looks in that yarn that that sample's knitted in. So I asked her to look up to see what that yarn was and she told me it ended up being Barocco Mercado. And this is what I bought. And it is in this beautiful blue teal color that matches my eyes. 
you see that? It was funny because I have a cardigan that's very similar to this color, only a bit brighter. And I wore it, I think I wore it for my last podcast. And then I wore it in my short little episode where I was explaining where I'd been. That was back earlier in the spring. And and both times I had people asking me for that pattern. And I, I that was a store bought. I bought that at the thrift store. <laughs> I love that cardigan. It's so warm and cozy and thick. And I love the color because it, it, um, compliments my eyes. So when I went and I saw this color, there was only three skeins out on the shelf and I was bummed. And so I said, do you happen to have any more of this in the back? And she said, I don't think so, but I'll look. And she did. She had six skeins total. I bought five. I, according to the pattern, I would probably only need four, but I'd rather buy extra and they were all the same dye lot. So I just, I wanted to be safe. And I thought, well, I can make a hat. If I have extra, if I have a whole skein, I'll make a hat. So look at it, it's gorgeous. I love this color. Okay, so Barocco, Mercado, and the colorway is, it doesn't have a name. It just has a color number, so I can put that down below in case you're interested. But it's so pretty. I like this color a lot. So that is for a Felix pullover, which I'm super excited to start, but I'm not going to start that until towards the end of the summer. I want to start it probably in August because I want to have it to wear in the fall, but we'll see because, oh yes, I didn't share some news. I need to share some news here in a bit about another reason why my summer is so busy. Okay, so that's my first five skeins of Barocco Mer Mercado for a Felix pullover. Then I told you I went to the Salty Sheep and I bought that sock yarn that I was, that Zauber ball that I showed you guys already that I've already cast on and I'm knitting. And then I bought some little fox yarn for another Rift tee. And this is, um, this is, so I, when I was there, I said, I love this rift tee that I'm knitting and I'd actually like to knit another one in um and she I knew she had little fox yarn but she didn't have the linea which is what the pattern calls for the base linea but she said that she had talked to the woman who owns little fox and this willow is actually very similar to it so it's going to give a very similar product and it is merino and hemp 328 yards and this is considered a sport weight but it also plumps the owner of the shop I wish I knew her name I feel like I probably asked her but now I don't remember what it was she showed me her little swatch that she did and she had blocked it and it just was beautiful it had plumped up all nice and it was knitted with size 8 needles to look at this yarn you wouldn't think that size 8 would be a good choice because the yarn weight looks too thin for a size 8 needle but because it just plumps up when you block it it actually works out really well so it was nice to see her little gauge swatch and see that yeah this is gonna work so I got three skeins and this color is called smudge so it is like a charcoal light charcoal with blue tints I like blue I wear a lot of blue. Can you tell? Um, yeah, so this is going to be another rift. I'm gonna cast this on as soon as I finish the rift I'm currently working on because I do like it that much and I think I'm going to, I think it's just gonna be a really nice shirt to wear in the summer. Now I don't think I could wear it on a day like today. It's in the mid nineties and it's so humid that it's like when you walk outside, it's kind of suffocating. So I'm pretty sure I don't think I would wear a knit t-shirt on a day like today um, that's made. Even though this is hemp, it's still 70% merino. But you know, it's not always this hot. So yeah, I'm excited to have that. Okay, and then I have two more skeins that I bought. Again, with a purpose. I love when I buy with a purpose. Caitlin Hunter has a, 
has a cowl that is named Glacier Park. And it's this really pretty color work shawl, not shawl, cowl. I've, I bought it a while ago and I've been wanting to cast on, but I haven't because you know, that's what we do. We buy patterns and then we don't, we don't knit them at least not right away. Sometimes never, which is pathetic, but it happens. So, um, the salty sheep had the fiber co lots of the fiber co yarn. And so I bought Oh my gosh, this is such a color. I just realized what a color theme I have here going. <laughs> I bought these two colors. This is called their Amble. This is their Amble base. It is Merino, Alpaca, and Recycled Nylon. And the Glacier Park Cowl. I wonder if I could put a picture in right here. So it has, it's, it's two different yarns, two different colors, and it's, it's color work and it's, I love it. And I actually really liked the colors that she used in the sample. So I tried to match those. Um, I think, I forget what yarn she actually used in the pattern. I think it was me. It was a fingering way, but I think it was maybe wool folk fit. Um, I got this instead. So. I will be casting that on this fall. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to do this one this summer. I got enough going on. Okay. And then I also, uh, this, this was a totally unplanned purchase, but my daughter and I had to go into Michael's craft store to get some metal stamping supplies for her. She was buying some for herself. And I just, as I always do, I just happen to walk back past the yarn, even though I really don't like acrylic yarn and I hardly ever use it, but it is nice to have on hand for certain things. Like if you're knitting baby knits for somebody or certain gifts, uh, like for our prayer shawl ministry at our church, I would never knit a shawl out of merino or out of wool because, um, it's just a lot to have to worry about caring for. So that's where I use the acrylics or the acrylic and wool blends that they have at craft stores. So I was back there. I thought I'm just going to go through and see if they have any yarn on clearance. And they did. And it was this, I, I don't know. I've never seen this before, but again, I really haven't been in a lot of stores because I, I just really haven't needed to buy yarn, of course, but they had these Karen cotton ripple cakes. I bought two of them. And this color is called Iced Latte. And this is a lot. It's 100% cotton, but I like it. It's like a really, I just, I just imagine, I want to make a shawl out of this. It's, it feels like a very, it's a heavy cotton. And it, so I feel like it's going to have a lot of drape. Of course, I haven't done a gauge swatch yet, but that's what it feels like. And this is a 240 gram cake of yarn and there's 491 yards in it. Now this is where I need your help. Do you have any suggestions? I got on Ravelry and I was kind of looking for a shawl. You know what I was thinking about doing there? Um, so I've made the farmhouse shawl by cabin four. Is that who makes that? Is that who designed that cabin four? I'm pretty sure that's who it is. I've made that so many times. I've talked about it on my podcast a lot, but I also have another pattern of hers that's kind of similar, but it doesn't have all the fringe. And it's a little bit different with the garter ridges and stuff. And I forgot I had purchased it. I purchased it back whenever I purchased the farmhouse shawl. And when I was on Ravelry looking for some ideas to use this, I saw in my library that I had purchased that. Can't remember the name of it. Hmm. Um, but I think I might make that shawl with this. I'm still trying to decide. I don't know. But anyway, I liked I liked the color and I liked how heavy it felt. I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be a nice drape. So, that that is what I have for um stuff that I have bought. Now, I want to talk about two two podcasts. Two, yes, two podcasts that I have been enjoying. No, three. Three podcasts I've been enjoying. So let me see. I will mention them in order of discovery. 
So the first one is the Knitting Pickle. And I think she's Penrose Knits on Instagram. She's really funny. Um, I don't know. I just like her. I like her energy on her podcast. And I like what she knits. So I've been watching, like, you know how you have some podcasters that you like, but then there's some that you just like completely jive with. And when you see them upload a video, you get super excited. Like I always get that way when Sherry of Ollie and Bella uploads a new video. I love watching her. She is just, I feel like if I knew her in real life, we could be really good friends. <laughs> I just feel like so connected to her. I don't know why, because it's not like we even really know each other other than on being online. So when I mention podcasts on here, these are ones that I, you know, I get really excited when I see them. So I really like the knitting pickle and I discovered her. She's new. I think she just started this year. Actually, all of these podcasts. Hold on. Let me think. Between last year and this year, they all started podcasting. I'm pretty sure. So they have not none of the three have been around long. The second one is T B Kennan, and that's her name's Tara. Is that the name of her? Hold on, I gotta pause this and I gotta look at this up to make. I I think that's the name of her channel because I feel like whenever I get updates that's what it says but let me let me check on that okay I checked on it I'm glad I checked on it it's a loop through a loop but when it but her name is TB Kennan and it comes like she that's how she has it but her podcast name is a loop through a loop anyway I love her I get really excited when she uploads a video she she does this so she does it monthly and but what she does is she'll film like short segments throughout the month and then she compiles them all together and she puts like a beginning and an end to bring it all together. So instead of her sitting down like me and doing this long podcast, she does short segments throughout the month, just kind of keeping, you know, updating on the, on her projects and everything. And then she compiles them with bookends basically of her talking. So she's really, and she just articulates so well. I just, I love listening to her um, and I always love her projects and she actually just started designing and she has a is it called the dishy tea I think that's what it, the dish tea the dishy tea I forget I forget but I really like it and I may end up buying that pattern but I need to think about that first because I have so many patterns right now and it's a summer shirt and it has a short sleeve version and then she just started with this flutter sleeve version, which was really cute on her. I don't know that I would wear the flutter sleeve, but it looked really cute on her. So anyway, Tara of a loop through a loop. Excellent podcast. And then the last one I literally just found, just found, and it is little monkeys and me. Francesca, I think her name is Fernanda, Fernanda. Oh gosh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've only watched two of her episodes, but I just loved her so much. Like she was so um, she's, first of all, she's stinking adorable and she does amazing projects. Like her knitting is amazing. I love it. I love her color choices. Um, I love the projects that she picks and she just has such a, ver I don't know. I just feel like it's a, such a variety when she podcasts about like what she's showing. Um, but yeah, that's another one that I really I really like. So I guess I mentioned four because I also mentioned Ollie and Bella, which I think I've, I've mentioned her in the past. So anyway, those are some shout outs for some podcasts that I've really been enjoying. I don't watch as many podcasts this time of year because I'm super busy with summer and all that stuff. So, you know, like gardening, cause I do a lot of gardening, but, um, I just don't have as much time that I'm sitting down, but those are some that I'm really enjoying right now. Also, I want to say one of the things that I'm really busy with is my oldest son is getting married in August. So my son, Sergey, who is 24, he got engaged in March and um, they're getting married in August of this year. And we're having, hold on. Okay. My husband just walked in. I could hear him walking across 
the living room and I, yeah, he's still working. Well, his job is pretty much remote. Like he goes out in the field every now and then, but he does most of his work remotely. So he's home a lot. Um, oh, I was talking about our son, Sergey, getting married. So he, yeah, they're getting married in August and the ceremony is going to be in our backyard. So that's exciting yet also kind of, uh, not, I don't want to say stressful because I'm not feeling stressed about it. It just adds another layer, layer of like busyness. Just, we got to make sure that our yard's ready for it. Um, and it's not like we can just show up at the church or the venue and they have it all set up. Like we're going to have to set up all the chairs. We're going to have to set up the arbor. We're going to have to make like, of course, you know, I love flowers and gardening. So I've already got pots of flowers going and she's using sunflowers as her flower. Oh, you okay? My dog. My dog's coughing. So I've got like sunflowers growing in the garden. I've got sunflowers growing in pots and just other flowers going. So there's just, you know, there's just more work with that, but it's okay. Cause I, I enjoy that. But, um, anyway, so one of the things I want to work on is we have fencing that we have to fence. We have our garden fenced in to keep out wild animals. And, um, I want to crochet a bunting for along that. I have bunting that I've crocheted and I usually hang it up, but it's like, I did it in all different colors and it's, very faded and looks just horrible. What I was planning on doing with it is actually dyeing it. Um, but for their wedding, I'm going to do like an off white. I'm going to crochet a bunting in it. I don't know if I got off white or white. I can't remember. Um, I'm just going to do it in cotton. And then I figured I can dye that afterwards. I actually have three big jugs of, um, dye, natural dye, in my freezer downstairs that I got. What? Oh my gosh, I can't even think. See, my husband came in and it threw me all off. <laughs> oh gosh, the yellow flowers that grow in the fall all around my house and in my field. And people think they're allergic to it, but it, they're not. They're allergic to ragweed and it also comes out at the same time. What is it called? I cannot believe this goldenrod goldenrod I collect I have so much goldenrod that grows in the fields around us so I had made a dye out of goldenrod last year and I froze it because at the time I didn't have anything to dye with it so after the wedding I think I'm gonna take that garland and I'm gonna dye it in the goldenrod <laughs> um, so yeah that's super exciting but again it's also making our summer more busy um, but anyway, it's a good, it's, it's all good busy. It's, you know, camping, we went on vacation with my family, you know, being with friends. So yeah, it's all, it's all good things. Okay. So let's get to the last thing that I want to talk about. And that is the giveaway. That is the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. And I know not all 5,000 people watch this video because I can tell by the number of views I have, but we're up to five. We're a little over 5,000. I'm a little, why am I saying we? It's just me that does this, but you all helped me get here. <laughs> you guys helped because you watch. So it's a we effort, right? Yes. So I have had most of these goodies since last year, last spring when I was planning on originally doing this giveaway. And, um, so most of it was purchased, but some of it was donated. And so I really am appreciative to the people that donated for it. So let me start with the first thing here. And it's in, it's gonna be a little crinkly. So this is a mini set, mini skein set by um, Willow Tree Yarns, Angela, Willow Tree Yarns. And this is the Signs of Spring mini skein set and it's on her 7525 sock wait sock base 92 yards each there's five skeins it's 460 yards total so that is the first prize and I actually she donated this I actually bought another mini skein set that I was going to give away 
I bought it and so I bought that to give away and then she donated this so I'm gonna keep the other set for a future giveaway and then with that she also sent a little baggie that has some tea some wool wash and a little stitch marker in there so and I know that because she sent one to me also Angela if you watch this still it's I know it's been forever and you were probably thinking when is she gonna give away that yarn I, I donated <laughs> Well, finally I am. Okay, and then I have, I bought this little stitch marker off of a Knitter's Homestead. This is River. So um, I've bought other stitch markers and progress keepers and stuff. Actually, this is a progress keeper. It's a little clay bluebird and I have one just like it. I originally had bought it for myself and it's, I don't know where it is because I forgot to look for it before I started filming, but it's super cute. Take my word on it. I showed it on Instagram last year and I've probably showed it on here before but I don't have it to show and she has it all wrapped up cute so I don't want to take it out of this but it's a cute little bluebird progress keeper so there's that then so my uncle donated a prize he actually does leather work um, he makes wallets and hats and like, business card holders, holders and stuff like that. He's not online. Uh, anybody that is online that has a shop online, I will link them down below. But he is not. He sells at a couple local stores. But I had asked him to make me like a little notions pouch. And this is little, but I keep, I have one that I use. And I keep my little scissors. So my little scissors do fit in here at an angle. And then I keep stitch markers and you could throw in a tape measure and it has the nice little snap buttons and oops, hold on one second my sister's trying to FaceTime me um, so that is also going in there then I had to include a bar of my favorite soap so this is, I've, I've mentioned Emma before because I love her soap. It's my most favorite handmade soap. She's been, so I first met Emma. I used to do, um, so I used, before I knitted, I crocheted and I used to sell a lot of my crocheted goods. And I had, I would have a, like a craft, no, it's not, a, it wasn't a craft show. It was like a Christmas shop at my house the first weekend of December. We would basically clear all the furniture out of the main living area of our house, shove it all into the bedrooms, and I would have just for the fun of it, I didn't charge anybody, I would just have local crafters and artisans bring their stuff in and set up. And then they would all, everybody would just, um, we would have one main checkout, and then we, you know, anyway, it was really fun really fun and it was all we always had a good turnout but that's how I first met Emma she brought her soaps and I love her soaps and this is my favorite again I know this is backward backwards but it's solstice my favorite scent of hers I have several but this is my most favorite and this is all natural there is nothing in here that's crap it's all very good and um, the oils that are in it are lemongrass blood orange patchouli and clove it's amazing it is amazing I love it so I'm going to include a bar of that and this is actually considered a shampoo bar so you could wash your hair with this um, because it does I guess the amount of oils that she uses in it makes it more a more conditioning bar so you could use it as a shampoo bar and I have but um, most of the time I'll just use it in place of like body wash then I have this little, so another friend of mine has a big store and she sells, um, like she has vendors. So it's kind of like consignment, but it's cooler than that. Cause it's hand, some handmade booths, some lots of antique, lots of vintage. And in one of the booths, I found these little sock darners and I actually bought two. I bought one for myself and one to give away. And again, this was last year I bought this. All this stuff was purchased last year um, but yeah it's it's got some patina on it because it has been loved and used so there are needle marks and the way this works is you just put it up in your sock heel like you pull your sock heel or your toe and then you use it to um, 
fix any holes. Which, speaking of that, here, let me show you because I actually have socks that need darned. So let me grab one. Come here. Okay. So this is one of my socks that has a hole in it because it's, I can't use 100% wool. It just doesn't work for me. I get holes. Every time I, I try it, I get holes in my socks. So where was the hole? <laughs> now I cannot find the hole. Oh, here, here it is. So it wasn't a hole that was the whole way through. It was a hole that was starting. Okay, so see that? There we go. Okay. So you just put it on there and then it spreads it out so you can see it better and you can darn the hole shut. So that'll be in there. And then I, at that shop, I also, and it might have even been the same booth, I found this cute little trinket dish, this vintage trinket dish. And I thought this would be cute. Either you could put it in your on your dresser with your jewelry, jewelry with some earrings or something, or stitch markers. Like if you have a craft table, you could put some stitch markers on there. I don't know. I thought it was cute. And I have, I have stuff that I, you know, use in similar ways. So I got that to add in as well. So that's what I have for the winner of this. I guess I didn't really think about a prompt. Hmm. Okay, I didn't think about a prompt. I need to think of a prompt really quick <laughs> so that you guys can answer. But what well, I will say, first of all, um, if you could please, if you're not a subscriber or if you're just not planning on hanging around and watching any future videos, if you could please just pass by commenting because I want this, I want the prize to go to a subscriber of mine, you know, somebody that's actually watching my videos, not somebody that's just passing through and wanting to win a gift. I know that probably sounds really callous, but it's just the truth. <laughs> You know, because I put this together to give away to a viewer that enjoys my podcast. And, you know, I because I appreciate my viewers. Like, I get so excited when I get comments. I literally get so excited. And, um, or likes or whatever. I just, anytime there's some sort of engagement with my videos, it's very exciting to me. Um, so, yeah, I just ask that you be a subscriber to my channel. And, um maybe I don't know just tell me something that just tell me something you're grateful for because we all could use more gratitude right yeah I know it's easy to focus on things that we want that we don't have or the negative things so just tell me something that you're feeling grateful for on the day that you're watching this video and it can be something small or it can be something big because all those things are good and you know okay so the, this I think this is gonna be a really long video it's probably gonna take a long time for me to edit and I know I don't I don't like editing I don't know I wish my son did editing <laughs> I could just be like here take these clips put them together and make them nice <laughs> but he's busy anyway so I don't even know what I'm talking about so anyway, I'm going to attach to the end of this video, hopefully I will be able to attach some clips from the Salty Sheep Yarn Shop in Swansboro, North Carolina. Wonderful place. If you are in that area, make it a point. I'm talking, even if you're like 45 minutes away, make it a point to go. I would even drive an hour to go there because it was that nice. And the, the yarn there, like I'm trying to think, well, you'll see in the video because I, I filmed the different yarn. <laughs> So the owner was fantastic, loved her, so nice, and um, just had a just a wonderful variety of beautiful yarns and notions and all that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for participating in the giveaway. I really, really appreciate you guys, and um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I'll talk to you next time. Okay, so I am in Swansboro, North Carolina and I'm sitting outside a uh, yarn shop that's here. I stopped in early in the week, it's Friday. So we're vacationing in Emerald Isle, North Carolina, and this is about a 15 minute drive from where we're staying. So I stopped in earlier in the week, but my family was sitting in the car, so I just did like a kind of a quick look through the shop and 
thought I'll just come back myself later. Well, here it is the end of the week and I'm just coming back. So I'm going to, it's such a cute shop. She has the owner who I do not know her name, but she, um, I spoke to her a bit when I was here on Monday and, um, she has such a beautiful collection of yarn and, um, just really cute how she has the shop all laid out with a big knitting community table in the middle. So, um, anyway, I'm about to head in and, um, I'll show you guys around. Okay. So I suppose it might be a good idea to give you the name of the yarn shop. It is uh, the Salty Sheep Yarn. 